Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Perspectives. Mia Mohammed Nawaz Sharif's convoy has now reached Jhelum amidst a sea of people, according to the PMLN. And it is now clear what the PMLN meant when they threw out the term taking their case to the people again and again. However, what is not clear, even at this stage, is what the PMLN hopes to achieve through this, this particular uh, show of strength, certainly, and also you know, uh, showing that Mia Saab is still very much a leader of the people's hearts is another term that has been thrown around. But what are the implications? Legal, surely, you know, there was a review. There's supposed to be a review in the making. Have we heard about it? Is that still going through? And what are the tangible achievements that the PMLN hopes to get from this march? Let's talk about all of that today. I have with me Barrister Masroor Shah, who's a legal ex expert. Thank you for joining us. And Hassan Khan Saab, who's a senior journalist. Thank you for being Thank with us. Uh, Barrister Saab, you know, like I said, the two terms that were thrown out by the PMLN repeatedly, one was that, you know, PMLN wants, will take their case to the people. And the second, that, you know, they will show that, that Mia Saab is very much uh, a leader of the people's hearts. Well, we've seen the march is now in progress. It's in Jhelum. How do you see, see so far? What do you think, you know, what are the achievements? What, what do you think is tangibly uh, something that PMLN hopes to achieve through this? show of strength. You see, we have to uh, appreciate the difference between a court of law, which has given that decision, right. and that decision has the force of law. Right. For all practical purposes, that decision will be, it has been already implemented. Right. And taking the case to the court of, there is no such court of people, it is an idiom. Right. Basically taking your case to the masses. Right. And that's the political side of it. Right. Panama case, right from the day one, it had two uh, facets, it had two aspects. One right. was the legal, right. which was fought in the courtrooms, and another was political. Right. And the, the, both the facets were fought uh, vociferously by both the sides of the political divide, whether it was the ruling party right. or whether it was the petitioner, the PTI, and the Jamaat Islami. Uh, apparently, uh, Nawaz Sharif has lost the case on legal grounds to disqualify now the case is going to be in, uh, tried in the nap court as well so i think now the ruling party is focusing more on the on the political side that at least they can uh, cash whatever damage that has been done to mitigate their losses and to cash on the disqualification because the political party is still in the power uh, they are eyeing at the 2018 elections right. so definitely i think their aim is because no matter uh, how many people turn out on the road, it would not change the nature of the decision that has already rendered. Right. But I think for politically, it may be uh, fruitful for them, and especially eyeing at the 2018 elections, I think their main focus is that. And for that, the litmus test would be the election by elections in NA120 in Lahore. Right, and we'll, and we'll go on to talk about that also in a bit. Hassan Saab, in your opinion, like Pastor Saab is saying, you know, it is about showing, uh, you know, s uh, moving towards the elections. It is about showing their strength, their numbers, mm -hmm. and they're trying to recoup whatever loss they might have had uh, with this decision, with the, with the Panama verdict. Do you think that's true? And do you think that it will contribute uh, towards, politically, towards the next elections, also towards the NA120 election, and also, you know, later towards the 2018 poll? Because that is, of course, the ultimate target for the party. Yeah, thank you. Look, I think this is a, is, I believe this is a golden opportunity for uh, Mia Mohammed Nawaz Sharif. Right. Uh, they're being thrown out uh, from the office of the prime minister. Now, definitely for him, it will be too hard to accept the decision, but he has done it. This is unlike right. his previous snatches, and he has right. fought that where he was. But this time, uh, he quietly quit the office of the prime minister. Right. Uh, he take a rest at his Mari uh, residence, and after spending some days, now he started a movement and he's moving toward Lahore and I think he's, he's telling the people that look I'm going to my home right. but definitely he is exploiting this opportunity instead of taking a flight to Lahore instead of taking the motorway and straight reaching Lahore in hours uh, three four hours now we has, he has plane uh, to hit each and every big city like Rawalpindi and Jhelum, Gujramala etc and reach Lahore mobilizing the whole GT road historically I think for the first time I'm looking at the GT road which is getting mobilized otherwise right. Uh, GT Road politics, you see that in, it, it was not that uh, type of, uh, we call it uh, taking, uh, uh, resisting 
the, the, the establishment are resisting the, the established uh, forces. Uh, nowadays, which Nawaz Sharif is trying to fight, definitely he is hitting the judiciary, but not in a way uh, the, uh, overtly. You think, that's what I want to come to. Do you think that this is, of course, the decision of the Panama verdict is final, you know, barring the review, which is the only legal option that the PMLN has as a party and, and Mia Saab have said that, you know, they are going to maybe go for a review, which was, this is, this is what yeah, earlier they had yeah. said. But, you know, as far as the, the legal option is concerned, that is, that is the only option that the PMLN have. But politically speaking, like you're saying, you know, is this a pressure tactic to, the, uh, to you know, for the judiciary, for other forces in the country? Do you think that it's, it's that show of strength is also to tell them that perhaps the verdict was not what, you know, uh, the people of Pakistan wanted. Yeah, I think Prime Minister uh, uh, Nawaz Sharif has already say, uh, stated it time and again right. that I accept the decision, but uh, I disagree. I don't, uh, the, the decision, I think, I, I don't, this is not based on fair justice. He has and, already and, stated it. And you know, Mia Saab has now said, I think in, in the course of these speeches that he's made in the last uh, one day yeah, or so, yeah. he said a couple of times that, you know, the decision, he was already, it had, it had been decided that they would disqualify him and then there was a, they had found a reason for it. So it had, it had not worked, you know, in the order that normally the decisions do work. But, you know, that it was already decided that they would, he would be disqualified and then a reason had been found for him. I think being a victim, uh, definitely he will try to, uh, to, 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 to tell the people that, look, uh, the decision with me is not fair, uh, the justice is not being done, and I have been victimized by certain forces. But being a, a, a on the seat of a prime minister for four years, definitely he is in a better position to tell the people that who are behind this decision. I think he will never do that. Uh, historically in Pakistan, uh, you know, the, the, there are you know, there are certain institutions, definitely there are forces. We call it establishment, somebody call it the, the head and forces, the, the, the non-political forces. So they are in the working, definitely. Right. And we I think also ju just been joined by uh, Mr. Ismail Saab from the PMLN. Thank you for joining us. Can Thank you me. hear me, Mr. Saab? Yes, I can. The, uh, I, you know, it, it is a huge march, the PMLN, and, you know, we have seen, according to the PMLN, there's a sea of people surrounding uh, Mia Saab, and we've seen, you know, his progress through to Jhelum. We've been talking about the effect of this march, and we've been talking about particularly what the PMLN hopes to gain from it. In your opinion, you know, what, what is it that PMLN wants to show, other than, of course, that, you know, they are in a position of strength? Thank you. Uh, I think the, what PMLN uh, is trying to do, or what we are, you know, what we are trying to do, is that we are political people, we are politicians, and uh, the Supreme Court has made a ruling against our Prime Minister, against right. the person that the people of Pakistan elected. And we are going back to the people of Pakistan and just talking about that. That's all there is. Uh, the Supreme Court said that Mia Nawaz Sharif is disqualified from being Prime Minister because he did not disclose the salary that he did not receive from his son's company. So we are now saying that look, he was disqualified. Your votes were essentially thwarted, or your mandate was rejected because uh, Mia Nawaz Sharif uh, was disqualified because he did not disclose salary he did not receive, uh, and, and and wasn't going to receive. This was imputed assets that uh, they assumed, and, and, and on the basis of which they disqualified him. So that's I mean that is our basic point that after all year and a half uh, of cases and everything. Not a single case of corruption was proved against him. Not a single case of bribe was brought against it or kickback or commission. And to this day, nobody actually has even made an accusation of any uh, specific corruption. They talk about generally about corruption, but they don't talk about any bribe or commission or kickbacks. So what are you talking about? You're talking about a salary from his son's company that he did not receive. So we are going and telling the people of Pakistan that this is why your prime minister was sent home, and that's all we need to do. We're not trying to show strength. We're not trying to show anything. We're just trying to go and talk to the people who voted us in. Right. And, you know, it is also being said again and again that it is to show that, you know, Mia Saab is very much still, uh, you know, a, people, a people's prime minister because, you know, they hold him very dead, which is what, you know, it seems to be, of course, people have surrounded him throughout and it's taken him a considerable amount of time to reach Jalen. But legally speaking, the PMLN still will go for review. I think that this is a decision that uh, uh, requires uh, uh, maybe a second thought by the honorable judges. And if we, if we are within our rights to actually ask for a review, 
the uh, the government of Pakistan and the Pakistan government took the decision of the Supreme Court within 15 minutes. The Prime Minister resigned, and uh, we implemented the decision. We did not let there be a constitutional vacuum. We elected right. the Prime Minister within three days. We implemented it, but we are right. not satisfied with the decision, satisfied with the logic. And just as uh, the Supreme Court. Um, ordered the execution of uh, former Prime Minister Zulfi Ali Bhutto, or justified the martial laws of General Musharraf and General Zia, or justified the imprisonment of uh, judges by General Musharraf. We think that this is a, d- a decision by the Supreme Court that goes against the democratic spirit, and we would urge them to reconsider. And other newspapers, such as Dawn, distinguished newspapers, have written a very, I think, cogent but and this, you know, uh, this March, before the filing of this review petition, is, do you think that this is, a, you know, a lot of people are also saying, criticizing it as a pressure tactic uh, for on the judiciary particularly, you know? To pressurize the judiciary, and we absolutely have no intention of doing that. If we wanted to do it, we would have actually taken them out of March or arrest before uh, the Supreme Court gave its honorable verdict. We before the Supreme Court, honorable Supreme Court gave its verdict. We did not right. do that. I mean, now Nawashi is just going home for the last four years. Imran Khan and his, and his you know, financiers and his party have been saying, go and Nawaz, go. When Nawaz Sharif is not going home, why are you worried about now? I mean, now you're scared of Nawaz Sharif because Nawaz Sharif is a wounded tiger and now Nawaz Sharif is free to do politics while you've been doing politics for four years. Now wait till Nawaz Sharif does politics for the next eight months and inshallah right. the team and then do a victory again next time. Right, and, uh, and and in a way, do you think that, you know, this is also PMLN gearing, uh, you know, gearing for the next elections? Also, you know, a very important election of, of NA120 is also imminent. So you think that, you know, this is, an, this is a way of for the PMLN as a party to get ready for the elections? This is, this is a campaign, mo- sort of going into campaign mode, particularly, you know, with this march? I don't wish to sound arrogant at all, but Allah has been very, very kind to us. Uh, in our party, and we have been, I mean, every litmus test that we've been put through, whether it's by elections throughout Pakistan, whether it's been local party elections, the tournament elections, every election that we've been, you know, we've been tested, we have, uh, by the grace of God, come out winners, and I have no doubt in my mind that again, the people of Lahore, who had a love affair with Nawaz Sharif for years, will once again go and vote for Nawaz Sharif. And yes, the candidate would be different, but it will always be me and Nawaz Sharif's picture that will get you votes in Punjab. Right, right. Thank you so much for joining us, Mifta Saab. Thank you for your time. Um, coming back, Pastor Saab, in your opinion, like I said, you know, of course, um, filing a review is the other option. In your opinion, do you think that, you know, this is a pressure tactic um, before, you know, for the judiciary, particularly when, you know, a review is imminent? I don't think so. The number of people, if Nawaz Sharif Saab gathers on the road, would have any impact on the review because for the review, the scope is very limited. Right. And uh, it is also uh, to be borne in mind that this is a unanimous judgment. Right. Uh, even an appeal uh, would not be successful if there's a unanimous decision. It becomes very difficult because there's no dissenting opinion on which the counsel who is arguing the appeal relies on, that right. you know, there is another interpretation of law. So here it's a review, the scope is very limited, uh, only uh, a new point which was not available or new material which was not available in the time of main argument, right. that can be raised and something, uh, the error uh, apparent on the face of the record. So I don't think so that that uh, is the case here. Of course, if it would have been an appeal, then there are many questions many grounds on which this judgment can be attacked and issues can be raised. But since it's a review and then it also has to be borne in mind that it will be presented before the same bench as far as practically possible. So in appeal, a different but judge... But is it true that, uh, that the PMLN and Nia Saab can, uh, you know, can file an application for the whole court to be present? They have, I think they have already drafted or perhaps may might even have filed an application. Right. But the Supreme Court rules enunciate that as far as practicable, uh, as far as practically possible, uh, the same bench would hear the matter. Right. Uh, the so it would be highly unusual for them to no, constitute. because there is no precedent. Right. Uh, there can be change of one or two members, and that too on for the reason of retirement of that particular judge. Right. Which, sometimes which is it's not so. The case, sometimes yeah. it so happens that say for the five-member bench, and when it heard the main case, 
the five judges were there and when the review came up for hearing, one or two mem honorable members retired from the bench, then definitely will be substituted by the new judges. But m effort would be made that it is heard by the same bench. There is no precedent and even the lawyer cannot be changed. You can't even change your lawyer in review. Right. So, and the scope is very limited. But if there were, that is why as a student of law, I always say that <coughs> the disqualification part of the judgment right. uh, uh, by the Supreme Court, I think that negates the notions of the fair trial because throughout the world, whether it's the civil law jurisdiction or the common law jurisdiction, it is understood, it is agreed that a fair trial is always deemed to have at least one right of appeal because no matter how sagacious, how learned the honorable judges might be, they are at the end of the day human beings. Right. And a man is bound, uh, it is prone to make mistakes in reading the evidence in the right perspective. So whenever a trial takes place or a court of first instance takes case and decides a matter, right. it's better to present it before another set of eyes, another judicial mind who looks at it objectively, reviews the whole case, and then gives a judgment. So the possibility of miscarriage of justice is minimized. And but is if the same judges who have already heard the matter, right. and according to their knowledge, of course, no malice is attributed to them, but right. from, from their own perspective, they had viewed an evidence and given an interpretation of the law. Uh, so uh, if the same bench uh, hears the matter again, uh, the purpose of appeal would not be uh, served in this Which case. Which in this case, in any case, there is no option of appeal. So okay. now there is only uh, only a review files appeal. unless uh, that on this count, whatever the ground that I have said, on right. the touchstone of Article 10A, Supreme Court may constitute a larger bank, though there is no precedent and the Supreme Court rules also do not allow that. Right, right. Hasan Saab, you know, coming to you, as Mia Saab has now left the party's presidency also, because, you know, under... Uh, after this judgment, after this, uh, you know, Panama verdict has come in, he's had to leave that also. Of, and on the other hand, he's very much at the helm of affairs. He's very, very, it is Pakistan People's Party, uh, sorry, Pakistan uh, BMLN, you know, Pakistan Muslim League, Nawaz Sharif. Nawaz Sharif. So he is at the, you know, he, even though he's not the prime minister at the moment, of course, you know, he's at the very helm of affairs. He's making the decisions. But do you think that he will be able to have that kind of grip on the party you know, on the affairs of the party when he's not the prime minister, also when he's had to give up his presidency of the party also? Look, I think um, uh, this Muslim League, uh, for the first time, uh, it has been mobilized by, uh, I think, uh, Nawaz Sharif, and he has, uh, he has given it a strength, and he has uh, made it a real uh, political party. I think, uh, as, as you are looking toward it, that uh, such a big decision came when the prime minister was disqualified, when the right. leader of the party was disqualified, but I think so far none of the none, none, of, none of the elected members, the National Assembly of the Senate, they have deserted him so far. I think so. Uh, definitely, whether Nawaz Sharif is in the driving seat, he's in the, he's the prime minister, he's the president of the party or not. I think that that will least matter for those who are the followers of Nawaz Sharif. Right. Definitely, you see that uh, uh, today uh, 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 when uh, uh, Bhutto was out uh, uh, and the Pe People's Party was led by. Mahdoum Amin, uh, Amin Fahim or the others, uh, Yusuf Raza Gilani, etc. Right. Still the people were following the Bhutto family and uh, pe People's Party right. because the Jialas right. are, so the same is, uh, I see that the same is for the Muslim League also. Right. If Nawaz Sharif is the president of the party, okay. If he's not the president of the party, people are following and he will be, you look at the... the so the, it doesn't the, write. He, he is still very much, you He know, is still very much and he is still very much popular. The leader the of the party. Hope, and I think he will be big. I don't, I, I don't expect, uh, as uh, Barrister Saab has said, said that uh, going for review, already uh, he has expressed his uh, type of no confidence right. over the judges. Uh, and, and he said that already the judgment was written earlier, but uh, later on right. uh, the, right. the, 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 the reason we found right. or tried to right. be found for it and, 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 he was, uh, and he was disqualified on a very flimsy ground. This is what he is saying. So going to the same judges whom he is accusing that they have written a decision earlier now and later on they try to find out and definitely i think the, the, the somehow so the standard of uh, morality uh, under the article 62 or 63 it's too it's it has been set too uh, i think too high and right, let, we've also we'll come back and we've also been joined by uh, asmatullah niazi sahab who's a senior correspondent with ptv world niazi sahab in your opinion you know we were earlier talking about the fact that you know because by virtue of leaving the the uh, presidency of the party by virtue of having to you know resign his position as the prime minister of the country 
will the will mia mohammad nawaz sharif lose his clout as you know as as the leader of the pmln in your opinion obviously i think there is uh, there, there must be some kind of a impact on on his uh, grip over uh, the party uh, because you see uh, when you are uh, having a, a post of uh, the president and you are having the post of prime minister and you are uh, you you uh, you have all the uh, the, the assistant and you have all the uh, the party leader of uh, of uh, other uh, um, uh, post and office barrier other office barrier um i think to that he might face and he is certainly he'll be facing i uh, i've been t- uh, telling you uh, and uh, earlier uh, this party uh, yes yes obviously he will uh, he will face problems he will he will face because you see uh, uh, as an uh, as, uh, as a uh, uh, president of of uh, pmln uh uh all the uh, office barriers of of pmln uh, whether those were on, on the uh, on the national level or the, or the central executive uh, uh, committee or the provincial level they were answerable, uh, answerable to uh, nawashi now i think they are not uh, and there, there there might be differences there might be soon uh, azizi sahab aren't they still very much ans- answerable to to mia sahab as you know he's the only leader of the party he's he is instrumental as far as you know all the affairs of the party are, are concerned you know we saw that in the last uh, during the during before the 2013 elections and during you know the prime uh, when uh, yusuf raza gilani sahab was the prime minister we saw that you know uh, zardari sahab was the president of of uh, pakistan but it was you know the bhutto family it has always been the bhutto family to whom you know the reins of of ppp they've always held the reins of the party so so don't you think that it is in some sense the same kind of situation if you look, look into the real affairs of uh, of uh, between 2008 till 2013 uh, before uh, the uh, before uh, uh, the 18th amendment the situation was entirely different and he uh, uh, prime minister used to uh, uh, obey the orders and the instruction directions uh, uh, given by the presidency and after uh, the 18th amendment and then uh, devolution of powers from the presidency to to the prime minister house the situation was uh, different and gelani uh, um uh, there are reports and there he, he, uh, the uh, president zardari used to complain and uh, uh, with his uh, uh, close aid that uh, uh, gilani is, is deviating because you see all the power of power vested uh, uh, in uh, uh, gilani if you look into the uh, most important most important uh, portfolio uh, and uh, posting of uh, um, uh, I, I think um, Zardari uh, was not inclined to uh, post uh, uh, Shari Rahman uh, as you as uh, uh, to, to you as uh, uh, United States as as, a, uh, as an ambassador, but Gilani deviated. It was without the consent of uh, um, uh, uh, Zardari. So similar situation uh, um, uh, Nawaz Sharif, uh, Sharif can face, and there are reports that there there, there are uh, some kind of a, a faction in, uh, in between. Uh, uh between pmln uh and there are some kind of a uh, uh, media is reporting uh, as per the media reports media is reporting that there are uh, differences in in uh, inside uh, the family as well so let's see how uh, things unfold and how uh, nawaz sharif uh, going to control his uh, his grip over the party right right thank you so much for joining us niyaz sahab thank you for your time uh coming back barista sahab how do you see uh, the next elections in the sense that you know 2030 2018 elections that are now quite close and you know this is uh, the first after the 2013 elections when the pmln came into power this march is a people to people contact that that mia sahab is having you know after after those elections so in in that way perhaps you know it will be a, it will give the pmln a chance to regress any grievances that that the public might have or that the people might have felt during uh, their uh, during the time that the prime minister was uh, in uh, prime minister nawaz sharif was the prime minister of the country actually 2018 elections are quite far away right not in the 
uh, in the sense of time and space, but in time in terms of political events. I think we are missing a very important news of today, this morning. The Election Commission of Pakistan has dismissed Imran Khan's application, challenging the jurisdiction of the Election Commission regarding the contempt of court. And it categorically said that it does have the authority and power to punish the uh, contenders. Right. Uh, naturally, we would be uh, looking at the outcome of those proceedings very eagerly. And then we should also not forget that the disqualification case of Imran Khan is also pending in the Supreme Court, will be fixed again in September. Right. And arguments would be uh, commenced. So a lot would depend on uh, this, the outcome of these proceedings. Because if Imran Khan also gets disqualified, Nawaz Sharif is also disqualified, and there's also possibility that heads of some other major political parties, they also get disqualified by the Supreme Court on the touchstone of Article 62 uh, if a petition is filed against right. them. Then I think the electoral dynamics would change altogether. And perhaps some new political faces, some new political uh, parties might also crop up. Uh, because naturally, these political par Pakistan, in Pakistan, political parties are not as organized, as democratic as they're supposed to be. Uh, right. They are more people centric rather than uh, the ideology centric. So naturally, when the leader is disqualified and not one out of three, four major political parties, uh, some disintegration, uh, some fragments would definitely break away from the mainstream and right. give rise to other political forces. So I think uh, predicting 2018 election outcome at this stage when some very important cases are also pending in the Supreme Court, right. we have only seen decision of the first one, others are yet to come. And mo I think uh, January would be, uh, or February would be the time uh, where exact prediction can be made because the case of Nawaz Sharif would also go and be tried in, in the NAB court as well. Right, right. And That's if he gets procedure. acquitted, the entire ball game would change. And if he gets convicted and sent but to prison, but if he gets acquitted, what happens to the disqualification? No, that disqualification is on another ground. You see, disqualification is on the ground of apparently not disclosing your ten thousand dirham salary which you have not received. Uh, so that ground remains there, whether or not he gets acquitted or, or uh, convicted by the NAP court. But if he gets acquitted from the NAP court, then definitely politically it will have a huge impact because that was the main Panama case. Right. right? That was the main scandal. And if he gets acquitted by the trial court uh, on, on that main allegation, then the, the political scenario would definitely change. But again, the more uh, far-reaching impact would be the if in case Imran Khan gets disqualified. Right, of course, then the whole structure of the election. Because the, the parties, don't forget about election, the structures of the political parties would change. Would change yes. I mean, can you imagine PTI without Imran Khan? Don't we know how many major groups we have uh, who are at daggers drawn with each right. other within PTI? Right. Right. So I don't see that PTI would remain PTI uh, right. if Imran Khan gets disqualified. We may see a PTI uh, T and PTI right. S uh, coming up and getting themselves registered in the uh, uh, in the election commission of Pakistan. Right. Before I go into, uh, go to Hassan Saab, the, the other one other question that you know I feel legally, of course there are issues. We've we've, we've debated this you know before also, and and we've seen this being debated on media throughout. You know the provision 62 and 63, and the fact that a lot of you know there are issues. A lot of legal experts feel feel that there are issues with these provisions in the constitution and of course you know as we talk if we talk about numbers right now the pmln has the numbers to change any law that they want to in your opinion if that eventuality does occur what happens to the verdict firstly <coughs> let me shed some light on the virus of uh, our, our rationale of article 62 and 63 right you see there is no yardstick with anyone let alone the court to gauge the uh, biasness or the righteousness of a person. Because these are the things which are purely between a man and his God and his creator. Right. Uh, Sadek Amin still is some sort of, we can adopt some sort of objective criteria. We can say that everyone is a Sadek unless there is a declaration of the court to the contrary. Right. But why are we confining ourselves to uh, Article 62, 1F only? 
Right. There are other sub clauses as well. Uh, one of the sub clauses is that a person cannot become a member of parliament if he does not live his life, he does not lead his life according to the ordains of Islam. Right. So if now that the Supreme Court has raised the sword, has opened the Pandora box, tomorrow a petition can come against the future prime minister or a member of parliament uh, whom I cannot defeat in elections. I can take a petition and say that five years back uh, the prime minister skipped the morning prayers. And morning prayer is a fundamental principle of Islam. It is obligatory right. duty of every Muslim to say five prayers a day. So then the court will have to disqualify that person, disqualify the prime minister, that you missed one right, of right, the important which, prime right. duties of Islam. So we would open a Pandora box right. throughout the world. When I adopt this argument, I don't mean that we should have corrupt people sitting in the assembly, we should have liars and dishonest people, no. But this characteristic is better judged by the constituents, by the people who elect them rather than courts or the election commission. Right. So I think we should leave this aspect to the electorate. They are the best people to judge who is a, a truthful person, who is an honest person, unless of course there's some specific charge of dishonesty, there's some right. specific case of corruption. Now, uh, in an event, if the parliament uh, amends the constitution right. and, and uh, get rid of article 62 or amend it in a way, right. Uh, if it is simply amended or simply abrogated, it will not have any effect on the, the decision law. of the Supreme Court against right. Nawaz Sharif. But if it explicitly, unequivocally states that it will have retrospective effect, right. and that period on or the date on which the Supreme Court gave the verdict, it falls in that time period, then the effect of the Supreme Court would go away. But again, the very next day I predict a petition would come to the Supreme Court challenging that amendment. And uh, if you may recall the decision of the Supreme Court giving uh, when uh, art, uh, 18th amendment of the constitution was challenged. Right. That even the parliament cannot, according to the Supreme Court, even the parliament cannot change the form and structure of the constitution. Right. And since after insertion of article 2A, the insertion of objective resolution in our constitution, our constitution has become Islamic in nature. Its characteristic is Islamic. And Article 62 and 63 give the essence of the Islamic characteristics to the Constitution. I think the Supreme Court may strike it down on this count. Right. Hasbi Saab, you know, there is, do you think there's any likelihood, of course, we've been talking about the fact that this sort of the case is pending against Imran Khan also. And, you know, if, if the court does disqualify him also, then the parties would certainly, there would be grounds for political parties to unite against these sections. And for, you know, maybe try to repeal them, you know, certainly to amend them. In your opinion, do you think there's a likelihood of that happening? I think you can't rule it out if they can do uh, this decision, uh, right. which a person like me who's totally a layman is for the lies concerned. And I'm, uh, I feel that decision, decision is not fair and it's not done according to the, uh, the talents of justice, I think. So definitely, and, and, and as for the current judges, I think they have taken the role of the uh, the, the Iranian, the Guardian Council, uh, where they are going to qualify, and particularly on these two grounds. Tomorrow right. somebody can go against the Imran Khan and that he's a profligate. And uh, uh, profligate is also one of, if, if you are if you are spend, uh, spending more uh, than is required, so definitely he is going to the hel uh, the tourist resort, taking the helicopter, etc. So this is also uh, spending extra money. Right. So I think the Supreme Court or the judges, uh, instead of, they look, Sadiq and Amin was only one person. Right. You know the prophet, the holy prophet, right. peace be upon him. He was right. called the Sadiq, he was called the Amin. Right. No other prophet of the uh, of the prophet were given these titles. Uh, by, by the And these titles were given to him by the people, uh, by his ummah. So but I think the judges, look, uh, just, just to tell one thing, the judges uh, dispensing such a such a decision or a, a justice in the way, they should also look into their own, uh, what you call it, self. That whether they qualify to be Sadiq and Amin if they are declaring somebody non Sadiq and non Amin. So I think this is opening a Pandora box and let the people decide. If Nawaz Sharif today he is telling the people that you have elected me, he was elected by more than uh, 1 million people. I think his party took more than uh, 1 million, uh, well, well, I think uh, 10 million, one crore, more than 1 crore uh, right. vote. And only 5 people sit 
and give a judgment uh, on his uh, being good or being bad, then I think let the Supreme Court uh, elect uh, select a prime minister. But let the judges select a president the also. But let the judges yes. But the flip side, let me. Let me but I, I'm no, talking no, as a head. Add, add, right. yeah. add, add to what you have said. Right. With the Supreme Court in the course of proceedings said that if we apply this criteria, there will be hardly anyone left in the National Assembly. Uh, apart and in the from judiciary. Sir, apart from Sirajul Haq. And as you mean, and on the next judiciary. Day, next day, they even took those words. Uh, yeah, no, definitely. Did, but, and the judiciary, but, but just let the me finish it. In the judiciary, there, there, not, there will not be right. a single judge sitting on the bench. Right. If this criteria was applied, including the chief justice and including the justices, uh, right up to the civil courts. Right. So I think instead of setting a criteria for the. Uh, and this is the people's uh, mandate to elect. You may be a bad man, you may be a good man, you may be belong to another faith. But then the flip side of that argument is that the laws are there for everyone. And you know the laws are there to protect the people of the country against the corruption. Against there are bad laws, there are but good one, laws. One, one, and, and I think I'll come to, you know, I, I want both your opinions on this, but Bajpasa particularly, you mentioned that, you know, there is uh, the Panama case, which is ba the basic corruption, the case that revolves around corruption, is now with the NAB, and that NAB will investigate it. And the disqualification, of course, has, has come down to an, a smaller you know, point, which is that he did not declare whatever amount. But they will amount. be sitting on the bench. They have appointed a judge, yeah, a judge right. who will be, be supervising the investigation. Supervising right. 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 Be the chief it is again, it is again in violation of the law. It is again violation of the, the uh, independence of judiciary. Right. If, you, uh, if I'm sitting on Barrister Masood over, uh, Masood over looking his judgment, so definitely I'm giving but I'm the saying that the perception, uh -huh. But I'm saying that the perception that, that has gone out is that, you know, the Panama case, which was based on the corruption of, you know, a, a, a family, and now that the Prime Minister stands disqualified, it is because of that corruption. You know, that is a perception no, 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 that, that corruption, is being created no. also in by Pakistan, political parties, you know, to get their political he's leeway. Not qualified when we talk that. about he's, uh, CPI. As, as Masood said, that he's qualified on another thing. Right, right. Exactly, exactly. The problem with Pakistan is that we, we, we believe perceptions. Right. Now, look at the Surrey Mahal, uh, the Surrey Palace case. Now, every, despite the fact that the court. A very the famous court no, no, right. the yeah. court has absorbed Asif Ali Zardari and Shahid Motarma and Benazir Bhutto of all the cases. But still you ask anyone on the street and they'll firmly believe, yes, the palace belongs to them. Right. Right? So we believe, we live in the world of perceptions in our politics, actually. But I think Similarly, now they reality. stand. But the court has to be very careful. Court need not uh, to play to the audience. And the thing is that, yes, if... There is a special but here they play to the audience. Yes, and, and the, look at the, the way audience. the you petition think they was to the entertained. Yeah, I think the word is look at the way the, the look at the way the petition was entertained initially. It was termed as frivolous. It's not the jurisdiction of the Supreme Court to take sides. It is uh, according to the article. I think uh, uh, one ninety nine and one eighty four three. No dispute. No, no, no sir. People Representation mm -hmm. Act uh, nineteen seventy yeah. seven. Right. It is the uh, it is written there that if corrupt practices and these are the corrupt practices, if it happen. The session court will hear it, and then the division bench of the high court will uh, 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 it, it will appellate for it. Even right. in the fake degree cases, where there was a definite letter, clear unequivocal letter from the universities that the degree does not belong to us, I represented so many members of parliament in sessions court. The cases went from Supreme Court to the session court where they were tried. Right. Some sort of trial takes place. But if Supreme Court itself becomes a trial court, especially this uh, overlooking the investigating process that basically you're reducing the role of an honorable but why do you Imran Khan say that I have been asked Imran Khan say that I have been asked one of the senior judge to come to my court right but I so think I he think clarified that, that by saying that you know it was du done during the court and during court proceedings where you know Khosa Saab said that you know it should be case it, it wasn't done out of court or you know there was no shady shadiness but legally, involved when legally, he did even say when, that. when the court does not have jurisdiction there are so many, a plethora of case law that even if two parties agree and give consent regarding the jurisdiction of the court, court cannot assume jurisdiction. But, but the conviction, think, but, you're, you're but doing a lie. The why? conviction why do you will think be done. Look, look, the conviction will be done by a court of law.
Right. Supreme Court is not a court. Right, right. right. But in your, in your opinion, as uh, a journalist, it's a constitutional, you know, it's we a constitutional saw, court. Like, yeah. like you said, you know, we saw the case being paid, uh, played out, like the way it was, it was played out, not only in the media, you know, not only in court, but also in the media. Every day we saw the trial being, we, we, we disputed, you know, every day the disputed facts, the facts that were, you know, uh, allegedly disputed. Everything was discussed on the media, you know, on every TV screen every day after the trial. We saw the way it played out. Why do you think it happened that way? In your opinion, why did the judges go down that road? Look, I think uh, I'm not a fan of Nawaz Sharif. And what I'm saying, I'm not just for in fa uh, favoring her. That, regardless uh, of your political yeah, yeah, regardless of my political I think that the, the whole issue, it was politicized, extremely politicized. Uh, and, and perceptions were created that as if all the political leadership of Pakistan, look, you discredited Zardari over flimsy grounds like the memo gate, like then the letter uh, to the to the to the to the Swiss uh, government. You discredited, uh, 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 let's say El Tafusini, maybe a bad way, but he was a political figure. You discredited right. him. You discredited Mian Nawaz Sharif, and I hope that Imran Khan is also going to face the same uh, to face the same fa uh, uh, fate. And then you discredited the uh, Maulana Fazlur Rahman, and each and every. so this I think is very unfortunate in this country. Politicians are supposed to run this country. And one no, of the things no. that Mia Saab keeps on saying again and again during his, uh, you know, march and during when he, his address to the people is that, you know, there should be across the board accountability. Mm -hmm. Look, I think Nawaz Sharif, he has to do one thing first. I think he was also instru instrumental in dislodging the government of Pakistan People's Party, not once, twice, thrice. I think he was the person who went to the court uh, on a very flimsy thing, the memo get. A person has written a letter and he, he went to the Supreme Court and dragged the president and the prime minister and all the agencies. In lawyer's uniform. In uniform. And, and, and yeah, in, 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 in lawyer's uniform. Right. So and then again, and then one more, one more important point, just I want to uh, add. Yeah. Now, Nawaz Sharif is saying 62, 63 is bad and it's a sword yeah. on democracy. Uh, when 18th Amendment was being discussed, the parliament, requested him time People's anyway. Party was right. in favor of getting rid of it. It was Nawaz Sharif and Morana Fazlur Rahman that stood against it and said, no, we will not allow it to be deleted from the Constitution. He's paying the price for that. Yes, committed blunder. When, when, when Gilani was disqualified, you heard his speech, what, what he was saying. <coughs> he will so come back. I think this is, uh, we, blunders were committed by our political leaders. Right. And this, I think, the famous statement of Benazir Bhutto, when she was uh, 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 under 58 to b when she was, uh, I think, the, uh, removed from the, uh, from the her government was... Uh, uh, right, was, this uh, is, a lot of people, it is being said that this is perhaps a new version of that very... Uh, yeah, so definitely, I think, she, 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 she Mr. Prime, Mr. Nawaz Sharif, you will remember one day, you will remember me one day, and I think that death has Benazir come. Benazir Bhutto Shahid was very far-sighted as far as these issues were concerned. But now he has to, and he has to learn. He has learned. He must come up to the people and tell that, look, I have committed blunder in the past. Truth but and reconciliation com uh, the commission is needed, and there he has to accept his blunder. He was the person who uh, who went to the court against Yusuf Zaghi. No, and IGF, before that, right. IGF. Unfortunately, IGF. That's, yeah. that's all the time that we have today. Thank you for joining us today, Barista Zahab. Thank you for being with us, Hasan Zahab. Thank you for your time. The fact is that uh, the prime minister of the country was, you know, uh, had uh, was asked to, was, uh, you know, dethroned, so to speak, by uh, the Supreme Court. And the fact is that, you know, uh, the pr the disqualified prime minister has now taken to the streets to tell, you know, to to go back to his power base, so to speak, to go back to the people who elected him, and to 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 take his case, like it is being said again and again to the people of Pakistan. Whether it is, you know, whether it, it will lead to any, whether it, it will have any legal benefits for the for PMLN, for the Sharif family or not, certainly, politically, perhaps it was the right course of action for the party, for the Sharif family. And let's, let's see what it comes down to in the future. Let's see what the political climate would be, polit uh, particularly since you know, Imran Khan's case, like we earlier talked about, is also pending. So it's it's a little unclear at this point what kind of politics will emerge for Pakistan. Let's hope for the best. Thank you so much for joining us today on Perspectives.